some years ago, I was surprised that Vipassana meditators are called yogis. How does it relate to yoga? So the not sure whether the Buddha himself, but we definitely have this word uh, yoga um, used in our scriptures for yogi, maybe not exactly yogi, but rather somewhere like yoga vachara and so on. But be careful, Yoga Vachara was also a Buddhist sect in the past. So Yogi is a word that comes from the Buddha himself. Definitely, it's not just in Buddhism. We can see the word Yoga also in, uh, in Sanskrit. However, the Buddha used this word. And the Buddha used this word in relation to monks and to people and nuns and to people who practice um uh, who practice the buddha's teachings very ardently not necessarily meditating but preferably also meditating yoga is coming from the word yojeti and this word yojeti is actually a word for harnessing the oxen if you harness the oxen to go and uh, plow uh, in the in the field or you uh, apply whatever you apply on your oxen so that you travel over a path then you would be using in the word in the Pali language the word yojeti yojeti means connecting you're connecting the oxen to your plow or you're connecting the ox uh, oxen to your cart so that they go and something can happen. So the Buddha used this word of yoga for us, for monks, when they dedicate themselves to the practice. So the monks are then uh, harnessed. The Dhamma, the monks are then harnessed to the Dhamma, like the oxen are harnessed to the plow. And then something interesting can happen. What can happen? The crop can grow. What's that crop? That's the crop of the Nibbana, of the fruition. So we who practice the Buddha's teachings, we dedicate ourselves, and that's the word yoga, to the Dhamma, so that there can be some crop, there can be some benefit. However, in Hinduism, the word yoga has a little bit different meaning. There you connect, they use this meaning as well, the meaning that we use in Buddhism, but there is a little bit different meaning in addition to the one we use. And that is connecting this individual self or soul with the universal self or soul of the Brahma. Brahma is not just some god like in Buddhism, but in uh, Hinduism, Brahma is the god who created the world. He's the essence of the world that is everywhere in anything. And the idea that somebody is alone, that they are individual self, is understood as wrong because they are actually a part of this huge, big self that is this Brahma. And meditation is supposed to lead the meditator to understand that they are not individual, that they are just one tiny little part of this big whole, W-H-O-L-E, whole. So uh, that is the meaning of yoga. You are gradually coming to the understanding that your individual soul is actually not an individual soul. It's just an inseparable part of this huge whole and when you can understand that then it is a bliss in buddhism we believe neither in individual soul nor in the universal soul but we practice meditation of concentration and through this meditation of concentration which is very comparable to the practice in hinduism 
we also can experience that there is a very blissful, very interesting and seemingly permanent attainment in meditation. But because we already from the beginning know that this is impermanent, that this is unsatisfactory and not so, that this is not the aim, it is just the tool to get the aim, then it is easier for us to avoid attachment on that attainment and make use of that attainment for Nibbana. In Hinduism, that attainment of the deep level of concentration, also known as jhana, is used as the goal itself, not as a tool. So that's the big difference between yoga in Hinduism, where in yoga you connect your individual soul to the universal soul, which are permanent in their belief, and in Buddhism, where yoga means that we dedicate ourselves to the training of sila, morality, samadhi, concentration, and panya, wisdom. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bhante.